el fuego que... Okay. Well, I think that we are here ready to go. <laughs> my host or my, can you hear me? Hola, Sandra. Que bueno estar aquí en tu show. I'm so happy to be here on your show. How are you? There you go. Yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, I was like, where did my host go? <laughs> I know, I, I, I was like, the internet, exactly the time that we're going to start, it happened. So, I, hi everybody, Sandra Schlappitz with the Real Realtor Sensei Show here with a special guest today, Lucy Quinones. Thank you very much to be here with us. Welcome and thank you to give us your time. Thank you, Sandra. Oh, my goodness. I feel so honored and privileged to be here on your show. Uh, I love your consistency. I love the content. You always have someone exciting and new, and, and you've just been doing it nonstop. So congratulations to you. I love it. I love it. Thank you very much. So Lucy was born in Medellin, Colombia. She started her career of, as a licensed real estate agent in Cape Coral in Southwest Florida in 1999. So she saw it all. <laughs> and before I go through all you have, because you have a really big um, things to say about you, I'm going to let you tell me first a little bit about you personally. Who is Lucy Quinones? So for me to answer that question now, I have to tell you um, a little bit about who I thought Lucy Quinones was. I thought before a very transformational experience that I just went through in August, I thought Lucy Quinones was the broker, the real estate leader, the uh, entrepreneur, right? Everything that I was doing, I was living my life from what I was doing. And now, Sandra, I have to tell you that Lucy Quinones is a servant. Lucy Quinones is a woman that wants to deposit everything that she has learned her experience into other people to help elevate them, to help them, you know, walk that journey that is so hard in life. You know, we have dreams and nobody tells us that it's, it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. It's going to be lonely sometimes. So Lucy Quinones is a, a major visionary and dreamer right now. That's just ready to leave it all on the table. That's the best way I can, I can put it just ready to give it all away and share and, and, and just become the person I was created to be. Wow. Wow. That is really nice to hear <laughs> that, Lucy. And it's excited, excited because I know you had gone through a lot last year. Um, and if you don't mind, sure, yes. you, had, you, you had COVID and you were very, very, I would say very sick and in the hospital. And I, that, yes. I believe that... Um, you can share a little bit of yes there and you hear. Yes, which you're is absolutely right. Um, yes, uh, you know, it, it was a, tra a transformational moment. Um, the moment that I realized that I couldn't, if I stayed in my house, I was going to die. Um, I made the decision to go to the hospital, even though everybody knows, like, don't go to the hospital, right? That's what most people say. But I knew, I knew I, I, I have to. And that began an, an amazing transformational experience where I literally felt death on three occasions. Like I know that if I had just surrendered, I would have stopped breathing. But I was determined because there was this little voice inside of me that told me that I would make it and that this was happening to me for a purpose and that there was something that I needed to understand. It wasn't even that I needed to learn it. I needed to understand it. And one of the biggest things that I understood was that I had been living my life from what I did. And now it was time to live my life from who I am. That was it. 
that was one of the things there's there's many things that I got out of that and but yes it was it was a uh, 15 days in, in in solitary isolation um it was not being able to breathe it was uh another you know after 15 days in the hospital I ended up coming home uh connected to an oxygen tank not being able to walk not wow. being able to stand not being able to go to the bathroom by myself not being able to shower by myself. But wow. that showed me, that showed me two things, Sandra. And I think that, that that's the power of life. It showed me that we are created for a purpose. And it also showed me that this life has so much meaning. This life that we have, which is temporary because we all have an expiration date, yeah. is so <laughs> precious. It has meaning. It has purpose. We're here for a reason. We just need to find out what that reason is and then run our businesses, run our profession and live our life from there. You know what I mean? I don't know yes. if that makes sense. Yes. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, it's it's very, uh, how can I say these words? Because I have followed you before you got sick and after, and I admire you for, what you you do, your power, your strength, and and I said, you know what? She's she she's a model for Thank many you. of us. Thank you. And and we have to be strong, and we have to um, believe. Yes. And, yes. and and I like I said, I uh, yes. I was very happy to to see you back, and like I you you you're being blessed. You're here. Thank and you. You really. Look at you. <laughs> I'm ready for it. And, and you know, here's what I have to share with you and everyone that's going to watch your show, all your audience, is that um, in the tough times, there's always a lesson. So, you know, I've never been sick in my life. I've never been in the hospital. Wow. So, never. I've never been sick. I'm not a, I, I, never. I, I, the only time I went to the hospital was to have my kids. And it really stopped me dead in my tracks. And I heard this little voice. And this is what I learned. I learned that uh, life gives us signals. And we hear these little nudges, you know, do this, don't do this. But we have w free will and we are powerful and we're resilient and we're persistent and we're determinated. And, and we just go, 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 go. And when I was there, stuck to this huge mask. I mean, if you see the pictures of me in the hospital, because I took pictures of myself, because I said, if something happens, I want my family to know what I was going through and, and what was happening in these four walls that nobody can enter, nobody. Um, and when I look at those, I only looked at them once just recently. I was like, oh my God, that's me? Like you could literally see death over me. Oh, my goodness. You could see death over me. You could see like this person that is, is losing their life. However, I realized that our life comes from our spirit and my spirit was strong. And that's what we really need to protect. If we, I believe that if we want to be the best entrepreneur, the best you know, professional, the best leader, the best role model, we have to flow from the strength that's in us and not the strength that's out of us. Wow. Yes. You know? <laughs> so it's been a total, you know, it's, and, and, and it takes work because many times I find myself wanting to go back to the old Lucy. You know, I had a, a, a slogan, make it happen, make it happen, make it happen. <laughs> I can't make it happen. I have to be flowing from within so that I can accomplish on the outside. So it's a it's just letting go and believing, and believing. living living from a different place. Because yeah. does that, does that make sense? I don't even know. I know that we're in a real estate show, but I don't even know if this makes sense. No, it does. It does. We we are in a real estate show, but we what I like to share to to the audience is that everybody that is doing real estate, that all the entrepreneurs, not only realtors, we do have 
things that we go through. Mm -hmm. and, and that's that that that's a, a big problem. Yes. Nobody escapes. Nobody yeah. escapes from the trials and the tribulations. Nobody escapes from the tests. Um, and and so we just have to face those giants head on and be open, open to the lesson. So after I came out from the hospital, you know, long story short, they said I would be on oxygen for two to three months. And my husband walked in one day because I have this big generator thing looking that was the oxygen that, you know, the thing that would create the oxygen. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, do you want me to get you a portable? You want me to get you a portable oxygen tank so you can take it with you? Because I'm like, you know, I had been 15 days in the hospital without being able to move. And now I get home and I'm 15 more days sitting in a chair because I can't stand up. I can't walk. Um, and I remember I was going to tell him yes. And this is the power of determination that it doesn't matter if you're struggling to breathe or you're struggling with issues um, in the office or with people or business or anything. I remember I was going to say, yes, get me the portable so that I can leave the house. And it hit me. I said, if I surrender to connecting myself to a portable oxygen machine, then I just, I, I have created a bond between me and that machine when what I need to do is bring the power from within and get my lungs to breathe on their own. Wow. So I said, no, I said, no, because I will be off this machine in the next two weeks and off in the next two weeks, I was off the machine. Yeah. Powerful. The, the, it, that's the, the powerful mind that you can control. Right. And that's all we have. We, we only have control over our mind. We only have control over our spirit. That's all we really have control over. So it's been a tough lesson for me, but I realize that if I go back, to doing the things I did the way I used to do them, then I will invalidate that near, you know, that, that experience that took so much of me to, to overcome. And I, I, I refuse to go back. I wow. refuse to, it just has too much value for me to go back and be, be the same person I was before. So I'll, I have to remind myself every day. Nope. <laughs> Don't do that to me. <laughs> You can't do that. You can't, you can't be like that. You can't go back. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, Lucy. Um, tell us a little bit about all your account in real estate, what you accomplished through the years. And I know right now you are also international. So we want to hear that, that. So one of the things that I, well, the reason I got into real estate and this, this would go for the new agents out there. Um, I wanted to accomplish something big, but I didn't know what it was. And then I was blessed enough to find myself with a mentor, a teacher, a coach, someone that took me under his wing, right? So what does that teach me? That teaches me that everybody that's in real estate needs to follow that leader that is where they want to go. So wherever they want to go, you need to follow someone because they're going to get you there faster. They're going to, you know, warn you about the, the potholes and the red flags and the, and the, the, the detours that you have to take, and they're going to make you better faster. So I got into real estate wanting to do something big and um, I had no clue what I was doing. I didn't even know how to write a contract. I came from the medical field. I was super insecure, very shy, right? <laughs> Um, I couldn't even sell water to a dehydrated person in the desert because I would be scared to approach them. Wow. So I didn't even know how to approach people. So listen, if anybody had everything uh, against them to fail, it was me, but I wouldn't give up. So I became a really good student. And for 20 years, I learned everything from this person that had been doing real estate for 40 years. Um, so I've, I've always had the international vision. And then I had my own office in 2005, my own Century 21, which, you know, he became my, my investor partner. And, um, and, and, you know, life, life goes full circle. So it's true when they say that what you sow, you will reap. Because then in 2016, 
I consolidated my office with his office only out of gratitude, only because I realized it was my turn to give back to him. And that's what I did. And it was hard. It was difficult because obviously I was used to being just my office and me. Um, since then, I've opened up my own real estate academy because uh, I believe in coaching. I like, I believe, I believe we all need a coach. We all need a mentor. And what is the biggest challenge in real estate is agents get in easily, but then they make no money. And you and I both know if they don't make money, we're going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, I got into property management. I had to do property management, even though I didn't want to do property management in 2008 because I had to survive the market crash. So I did it and I ended up with a property management company. And, uh, and now I've launched my business internationally. So and, just and, a little bit. And you said something there. You said everybody for the new agents that to follow a mentor. But when I see you, you're still getting mentors, coachings, and you're still growing in yes. different ways because you go you're going to the next level. So for in my mind, it's you need as a mentor when you're new, but you also need a, a mentor when you are escalating your business because you want to go to the next level. And right. that's who you, you are, where you are. And being international in um, having a, a school, a real estate school, and not only that, you also now having all um, these realtors coming under you, not just to be part of your team, but also being under your wing. It's huge. It's 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 really commendable, and I um, um, would like to explain uh, to for you to explain a little bit. How did you get there? How it's it's Lucy getting to there, and what is your next step? What are what are you going to do? <clears throat> so you know, a lot of our success is wrapped up in in trials. I've learned that a lot of the things that I ended up doing out of desperation have become the foundation for another level. So for example, I never got into real estate to become a, a real estate coach, but after the market crash, I went from 120 agents, right? Because during the boom, everything was easy. During the boom, everybody had a real estate license. I mean, you remember more people had, a, yeah. more people had a real estate license than a driver's license they would say. <laughs> so I ended up uh, at, at, at Century 21 Birchwood International with 119 agents. I thought I was like, wow, this was so easy, I would think, you know. Um, I had a real estate show on Telemundo and I was like, oh my God, this was so easy. And then the market crashed and it was like, oh my God, how are we going to survive? I was so unaware of a market crash that I thought it was going to last a month. Then I thought it was going to last three months. Then I thought it would last. I mean, it can't last more than nine months. Well, you and I both know it lasted four years yes. before things really turned around. If somebody would have told me in 2008 that it was going to last four years, I would have had a heart attack on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I went from 119 agents to only 19 agents. Wow. Ah, and so now I was one day thinking, I didn't get into real estate to be small. I didn't get into real estate to not do something big. I remembered why I got into real estate. I wanted to do something big. And I just started asking, you know, the universe, I started to asking God, what do I do? What do I do? How do I get out of this hole that I find myself in? And the first thing that I, the first message that I received was, well, you know how you feel, the way you feel, a lot of other people feel out there. So why don't you start bringing people together? And that's how the BEPN was born in 2011. I started inviting people that knew me. Hey, let's get together and network. Let's get together and talk about how we're doing to keep ourselves 
uh, afloat in these hard times. So in 2011, I launched the Business Entrepreneurs and Professionals Network. Oh, wow. Yes. I and if you know about that one. <laughs> yes. And so if you go on Facebook and you look up the Business Entrepreneurs and Professionals Network, you actually see some of our current marketplace leaders now that everybody knows were coming to my little meetings in 2011. Wow. Then um, I was like, I need to grow again. What do I do? I don't know how to hire agents. I don't know how to recruit. I've never had to do this. Um, what do I do? And life started to send me messages through some of my agents. Lucy, why don't you train us? The first thing I said, and I can tell everybody, this is your first red flag or your first sign that life is sending you a message that you need to do is when you say, I don't have time. So I started saying, I don't have time to train you guys. I don't have. So one agent would ask, another agent would ask. And I would say, I don't have time. I have the staff, I have bookkeeping, I have property management. You know, I have to hire agents. I have to help you guys. I don't have time, but I found a way to make time. And I remember I would wake up at three in the morning. <laughs> oh. I would study. I would study. This was now 2012. I would study the material that I needed to prepare so that I can get to the office by eight so that I can have everything ready so that I can be doing my training at nine in the morning. And in my mind, I said, I'm going to do this for 90 days and I'm done. That's it. 90 days and I'm finished. So I gathered um, 17 of those 19 agents and I said, okay, guys, I'm going to train you what I did to make it in real estate, what I did to have a team, what I did with my team, what I did with me. And in my mind, I was, they're not going to, they're going to quit. You know, we all know that agents start and they, Stop, right? Don't we know that? Yes. <laughs> so in my mind, I'm like, they're going to quit. They're not going to stay with me 90 days. I called it the PX90 of yes. real estate. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I called it the PX90 of real estate. You know, come join me. I'm going to teach you how to get fit in your real estate career. Um, and on December, I think it was December 18th. It's on YouTube because I put it on YouTube my YouTube channel on December 18th, I went from 17 to 18 agents. So one more added on and they all finished their 90 days. And then my uh, broker partner came to me and said, you know, you cannot stop doing this. And I said, I can't stop doing what you can't stop the coaching. Look, <laughs> the numbers have turned around. The agents are producing. I said, I don't have time. How do you expect me to do this? And then that became that became what I now do that I am so passionate about. It wow. all came through a trial, through finding myself dying with 19 agents that were not producing. And now, so that's how that became. And that's how the school became with the school, the academy. Um and now the international, you know, I always had that vision of international because obviously I'm Colombian. And I said, what if I could help agents in Colombia learn to do real estate the way we do real estate in the United, in the USA? And why not? So. Wow. And I know you did a bootcamp, recently a bootcamp in Colombia. So tell us a little bit, how was that bootcamp? So. I, I had never done a, an event outside of the U.S. I mean, I've always done it here in my backyard in Cape Coral, Fort Myers, Southwest Florida. Um, we launched the boot camp October 27th. I connected with a, an amazing. Actually, she was part of my trainings that I was doing since 2014 to oh, broker wow. owners. Yeah. So life gave me the opportunity to do a training for broker owners and agents. Different training. Because remember, now I know how to re recruit. Now I know how to train. Now I know how to grow the company. Now I know how to hire agents because remember that was my trial. That was my, my biggest problem, but I learned it and now it became my talent. So wow. I would travel to Colombia and, and you know what? I, I want to make a parenthesis and, and, and remind all of us, including myself, our talent is hidden in our trials. Yes. 
So whatever trial we're going through, it's birthing a talent that we did not have or that we needed to perfect. So I started training agents in Colombia. In 2018, I did a, a broker training for only brokers and owners, how to grow your company, how to build teams and how to recruit. And then I met more people through that. And now when I went back, all these people helped me put the, uh, the uh, realtor bootcamp together. But one person, the one person, there was one person, a, a girl, her name is Susan Arias. She was the only one that came up to me one day and she says, I want to be you one day. And now she's my broker partner in Colombia. Oh, wow. That is nice. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. see, that, that is building consistent productivity in real estate. And that's what you do. And 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 you are all over the um, United States. You're also out of the country. And that is a, another opportunity that I know you move from the company that you were to EXP, which I think that's also helping you, not just in yes, it's yes. helping you in your whole ca career. So tell yes. us a little bit about So when I was with Century 21, I would tell my broker partner, one day I'm going to have 12 offices around the world. And he said, you're crazy. How are you going to do that? I, I said, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do it. But one day I'm going to have 12 offices around the world. When I saw the opportunity of EXP and he and I, you know, came to the agreement that it was my time to fly off from just being with him. I realized, I said, I, he, he was right. I would have never been able to have done it with a franchise because the limitations were too great. But now I have the opportunity of expansion, unlimited expansion. Unlimited expansion, yeah. So, you know, when they say that if you don't quit, you know, God, life will give you what you need to make your dream come true. And, and, and it's funny because it was... It was the moment I was laying in the hospital. One of those days, I don't remember what day, because I mean, days and, and minutes and hours just all blended together. I heard this little voice say, go back to the vision I gave you. You were called to a vision, go back to it. And I said, what's my vision? Oh, international. Okay, then that's what I need to do. I need to go international. Wow. Wow. Are you going to focus only international? You're going to be doing all. Oh. So my 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 vision is to be the number one international office. Uh, but my mission is to work with the local, national and international uh, industry of real estate. So, no, I have my local agents and I train them to do the same. Mm -hmm. I, I, I instill the vision in them. I said, why do you only want to do local? Yeah. You could do local, national, and international. Um, so, but I have the local agents. Obviously, my school right now is local, so I, I, um, I get people licensed in real estate um, in the local market. Colombia, they don't need you know all of South America. They don't need a license, so you could hire anybody. I mean, as long as you train them. So now I'm putting together the framework for. So how am I going to do this outside of the United States and make it not just, you know, successful, but maybe even better? And, yes. and, and so and I do national, you know, I have investors outside of Florida. So I I visit them and we build uh, the, the relationships. And so, you know, just always putting one foot in front of the other. You, you can't stop. You no. can't stop. You can't stop. It's every day makes a difference. What you know? What else can I do to align myself to my my purpose and my mission and my assignment in life? And real estate happens to be the vehicle. Yes, and um, you have also been involved in, in other organization and organizations, and one of them is the National Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. Uh, yes. Tell us about that story. <laughs> So in 2018, I have uh, Donna Bull, who is a local mortgage person, come into my office. She had rented space in the big building that I was operating. And she says, you know, I got a phone call from somebody in Naples and they're opening. They're looking for someone to um, to start a chapter, Cape Coral. And 
I had been thinking for a year before that I need to give back to the community. I need to give back. Long story short, there were seven people that showed up on the first call. They gave us an assignment. They said, okay, you guys have one week to invite six people each. And I was ready. I said, okay, who am I going to call? So I started calling people. I invited them to the next meeting. Little did I know I was the only one that showed up with the six people. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so I'm the only one that showed up. And then they said, okay, Lucy, put a board together. Um, obviously, I'm very proud of being Hispanic. I'm very proud of my ethnicity. I'm very proud of my profession. So the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals was like the perfect fit. So I worked all 2018 putting the board together, put a board of 12 people together. We launched the chapter in 2019 and the rest was history. And so here we are. But one thing that I did make sure is that they only wanted to name it uh, Cape Coral. And I said, no, but we are Cape Coral Fort Myers. So that was what, that was my biggest thing. I wanted to make it sure that it incorporated both and it did. So that's how I did that. Wow. Well, congratulations, uh, Lucy, for all your accomplishes, accomplishment. And what would you say to anybody out there, entrepreneur, what would you, uh, will be your advice? You have to have a vision. That vision has to burn inside of you. You have to become obsessed with it. <laughs> you literally have to become obsessed with your vision. You need to remind yourself of it consistently. And I can tell you because I, I stopped dreaming many times because things got so hard. Things got so difficult. You know, I gave up on it. But something would bring me back to the vision. And then you have to focus on you becoming the best version of yourself. So work on you, work on you and make sure that you align yourself with people that are going to support that vision and that are going to, you know, a lot of times people will come into our life uh, to make us better. So they're going to be the people that are the difficult ones, the people that are the hard to please, the people that do us wrong, the people that stab us in the back. But again, realize that we're on a mission. So everything will work out for my best. Everything will help me to be better. Even if it's somebody that is trying to, you know, do <laughs> wrong, you got to look at it that way. So every entrepreneur, that's, that's really, you know, the calling of an entrepreneur is just that person that, ref, you know, you'll fall, you'll get beat up, you'll, you'll, you'll lose your breath, you'll be on the ground. Oh, but like the phoenix, watch out, because when I rise up again, just like the phoenix, I am going to elevate myself higher. I'm going to use everything that intended to kill me or to destroy me or to hurt me. I'm going to use that for fuel to rise up higher. So I tell people, become a beach ball. You know, a beach ball, the more you try to put it down, the higher it will, it will bounce. <laughs> very wise words, uh, Lucy. Thank you very much for your time. Um, to all the audience, remember, your real estate essentially show is every friday um from 1 to 1 30 and um, we might not be doing it in christmas but we will be back we're doing next friday and then we're going to be back january come back we bring always people like lucy that giving you so much value just to talk with them for a little bit uh, lucy thank you thank you congratulations thank you I will see you soon. And if I don't see you, happy Christmas, happy holidays. Happy.